it is time to cut this little guy. You know, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to cut it because, you know, I, I don't want to cut it with him looking up or down. I want it kind of straight. And you can do multiple cuts, but the first cut's going to be the easiest cut. I think I've got me a line here. What I'm going to do before I cut it, the, the dome was separate from the head and it kind of snapped in place. It's not a perfectly smooth line. I've got a sanding block and some sandpaper. I'm just going to sand it down smooth. It's going to be easier if doing it now where I can hold on to the back of the head and stay cutting and then I don't have anything to hold on to. I'm trying to you know, do it that way. So I'm just sanding it down. It's just, there's just a ridge where the two meet. If I can knock that down now. Sure, things better. I'm hoping there'll be a tight enough gap that when I paint it and prime it, I don't have to do any fill work. Being plastic, I mean, it's sanding pretty quickly. Right, check that out. That thing is looking really good. I've kind of carved it where it's it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. We'll refine it later, but I'm really liking this. Now, while my reference one does not have the lower jaw, you know, with the size of the skull being a little smaller, it just I need a lower jaw to fill in the space. I think the proportion of everything looks good. Now it's going to figure out how this trim is going to go. It's going to start putting this belt together. I mean, I like the way that looks. I really like how it looks white and it pops off the green. Now, my reference is gold. I'll probably ultimately paint it gold, but... I just, I like the way that looks. It just looks, it looks creepy, and that's what I'm going for. You can see I did not let the convex cement fully dry. I put it down wet because I knew that I would not be able to put this down in one fell swoop. I'd have to adjust it. So when it's wet, it's not quite as tacky, so you can still move it. I forget that the with this really thin craft foam, convex cement makes it expand a little bit, so you kind of have to like squish it, which this small stuff, it will expand, it will stretch and compress a little bit. So it's on there. I mean, it's there's like a few areas that I wish were a little bit better kind of is what it is at this point towards the end it was getting tacky and I just couldn't adjust it anymore overall I mean I think it's decent it's just you know, this thin foam I, what I probably should have done is separate it and trying to do one big thing you know I just have been a while since I've done this I forget about some of those little details but I should have split each little piece and worked with them individually that way I could have done this top band and make sure lay that down little by little get that perfect trim it as needed could on these bottom pieces I don't know why I thought to do it in one one big piece I mean yeah I don't have any seams but with contact cement, you can you can do it do the joints so tight that they will disappear once you paint it. So I could have done this better. It's not terrible. Yeah, it's not terrible. I mean, I think overall, you know, there's there's more to the costume. If this was like you know on my forehead, yeah, it, it I might want to improve it. But it's the belt. You know, it, maybe I do some battle damage. Battle damage is great for hiding little screw ups like this. Overall, not bad. I need to attach the head to it. But I need to figure out the curve first, and to figure out the curve, I need to figure out the rest of the belt. And there's, so there's a few things I need to do before them. But I mean, overall, you know, from like five feet away, that is not bad at all. That is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So I took my pauldron, I sliced it, I diced it, I made it wider, I made it longer, and so eventually I just drew it again so I could get a really good look at it. I think I'm happy with it. I mean, I think I'm ready to cut it out of some foam. I think it's sized the way I want it sized. I do have the ring floating around here. I kind of size to that. This ring is kind of right in the middle of the, I don't know, what is that, solar plexus, chest plate. So I'm ready to cut this thing. I'm going to cut that EVA foam. Because EVA foam, just look at the reference model. The EVA foam is the perfect thickness. Uh, I did cut. I had I had two of these just so I can see both sides. That bounces out. Then I recut. 
I redrew this one just so I can see. And this has the leather straps going across. It's got cord going across. I just wanted to draw that out there and see how it worked. Now the thing with this armor is that the edge, it flares up. It kind of flares up like that all the way around, but it also curves around my shoulder. Now with, you can see this paper, it doesn't want to flare and curve at the same time, but the thing with EVA foam, it's got enough stretch in it where I can curve it over my shoulder, and then it'll stretch enough to where I can flare up the edge too. I mean, EVA foam is the perfect application for this shoulder armor. So I've got two shoulder patterns now. They don't quite have the right shape. A little bit of heat will fix that. But these edges, they need to bend up and flare up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just cut a very, not all the way through, but I'm gonna cut a shallow line all the way around, and that'll allow the foam to bend and give a nice clean line on the outside. You don't wanna cut on the outside because again, you're folding in. If I was folding, I was folding out, you know, if you're folding in, it's all about your angles. You know, you, I'm gonna cut the back so it's just that cut will allow it to bend up on the back and get this shape. And I'm excited to see these take shape because I'm ready to actually have, I mean, I've done a lot of little stuff. I have this belt that's halfway done, but I wanna see something physical in this costume. And I may be trying to dye strip the wool tabard next. Uh, I thought about testing it, but I don't wanna waste the dye stripper just to test it because I feel confident this wool, the color's gonna strip out of it. Now I could absolutely be wrong, but I'm feeling good about it. And I just want it to work, so it should work, right? So I marked all my corners on here, you can see, just so I can cut nice crisp lines and not overcut, because I want these lines to show up really well in the front. These shallow cuts are gonna promote the bend on the front. I want nice clean lines in the front, so I need nice crisp lines on the back. It'd be very shallow cut, like eighth of an inch deep. You know, you cut too deep, these things are just gonna separate. I don't want that. What I will do after I get these bends right is I'll come back with just little strips of foam, just kind of plug that gap to make it structurally sound. I mean, it's just good to fill that gap. That way you don't get any flex. You're not gonna have any potential tears. So I made my cut and see, I'm just, I'm just bending it by hand, just trying to get a little bit of that flare to the edge. It's flaring up. Heat will help that more. I mean, heat with heat, you can really shape foam, but just with, just with a simple cut. I did go back, I scored it very shallow. I did it a little bit deeper, just because I wasn't quite getting the bend I wanted. Just be careful not to go too far, but you can see, I mean, that is looking right. Now, when you bend this like it, it wants to flatten out, but again, heat's gonna help that, because this stuff will expand enough to where you can you can curve it two ways, which is very handy. And really, it's starting to look like something. And that is awesome. Wait, be this side. I did label both sides, L and R, just so I don't have to like look at, you know, which side is cut and figure it out. I can just LR, boom, I label everything. So I can just quickly throw it on and know what side's going on. So I don't have to like look at, all right, this edge cuts in, this is a sharp corner, that means it's this. I don't have to do all that figuring and thinking. So I think next, I think I just need to, I need to cut the next one, heat them up, and get the shape right where I want it. Cause this is really looking like something. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on the leather. Cause you know, there's a leather, there's a leather like pad on it. Then there's the cord, which I need to unbraid and rebraid the cord. I need to figure out how to do tassel still. There's leather connecting each piece. I don't want to go too far into the leather yet because actually I do have the right color leather for this. So that is one piece I don't have to dye, which is awesome. I've got that, a nice big piece of it right here. I mean, this brown, it may not be a 100% match, but it's like a 96% match. And I will take that all day, which means I don't have to do anything. I can easily, you know, cut the pads I need for the center of it, cut little straps out of here. It's gonna be perfect. So I'm happy that I've got some leather that actually matches. So let me get to shaping these things so we can move on to the next step, whatever that may be. This is one reason I really like EVA foam. It's a very forgiving material. I don't know if you can quite see that, but I cut way past my line because I just mark one in the right spot. So it's an easy fix. What I'm gonna do is I will just, when I'm gluing all this up, when I get these folds right and I wanna fill it in with some more foam just to make it a little more structurally sound, I'm just gonna put some contact cement in that cut hold it together and it'll be perfectly fine. I mean, you know, if it was like a huge divot or something, I could always put more EVA foam stuff in there, glue it, and then, you know, cut it flush. EVA foam is awesome to work with. I mean, there's really like, yeah, you can screw it up, but there's few screw ups that are so bad that you can't fix it somehow. Now, it is a little tougher to finish this, you know, once, you know, if I were to slice this, I could cut, I could put some kind of cement in there, hold it together, but, you know, it's not like an automotive finish where you get stuff really slick, but even slices on the front, you can fix. And the nice thing, most things I do, I like to have some battle damage. So if I'd actually like, put a big slice or gouge in the top of this, I mean, well, I'm covered with leather. That's different. But, you know, if you mess it, like, let's say the corner, like, let's say I nick a corner. You can just make some battle damage out of it.
So I'm trying everything on, trying to you know, make sure everything sounds right, because I think I'm very close to cutting out the tunic, trying to dye strip it, all that good stuff. Am I going to test it first to see if it dye strip? No, I think it will. I feel confident that it'll work because I want it to work. But I was looking at my shoulder pauldrons, and I'd widen them because this little center section that will eventually be leather, it just seemed too thin before. So I widened it, I think, at an inch or two. Or no, I think I widened it like an inch and a quarter into that somewhere in there. And so once I put all this together with the tunic, these things are too wide. I mean, the way the, the inside edge should hit about right here, you should see a little bit of yellow tabard here. And well, if I do that, it's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half too wide, and this sticks out too far. Because um, I don't want it sticking past the shoulder because I have a little shoulder arm that hangs off the shoulder. So I think even though I just did these and I shaved them, I think I've got to cut them. I mean, yeah, I could leave them and nobody would know, but I would know, and it's just, it's bothering me. And the thing with this costume and the dimensions and the proportions is... I just keep going until it doesn't bother me. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I can just, where I did this cut, I'm just going to slice it right off, do another cut, an inch and a quarter inside, and reshape them. And I think whatever stuff happens in these corners, I think I can just work that out. But these things, I just, I, I want it right. In the end of the day, it's all what I want and how much trouble and time and work I want to give myself. And I want to give myself some more work. The tabard, I mean, looking at that, it looks right. Like I. I don't know. I'm trying to find something to change. I did like the, the little tail in the back. I did make it a little bit longer because I, I want a little more space in the back, like kind of a wrinkle. So if I bend over, it's not going to, you know, untuck it. Like, I've, you know, these practical things you have to think about when you're in a costume. You might have to bend over. You might have to, you have to sit down. So there's things to think about. So I'm, I'm adding a little bit of space there just so I can have a wrinkle right in the back. So it gives me a little bit of range of movement. So got to cut those things. <sighs> Hate it, but got to do what you got to do. Got to get it right. So here was the width of my original one. Here's the one I've cut down. Uh, it is what it is, man. Got to do what you got to do. So I do all need to reshape this. So I did this. I do have this slice going all the way across. I'm just going to contact some of that before I start shaping that. I mean, the heat can make the contact. Well, the heat can make the contact cement release a little bit. I might still contact cement. That way, I'll just protect it from melting it and everything all that. Not melting it, but heat treating it. That's one done. I mean, it's it's. It is what it is. I, mean, I feel like the center part looks a little too skinny now, but the overall width and proportion, it is so. So I'm getting ready to cut out the wool for my tabard. I'm leaving a little bit of space up top because I will have to sew uh, the shoulders to the front and back. Everything else is just like a binder along the edge. I'm not going to have to create a seam there, but the top I will, so I'm leaving a little bit of excess there. I fold this thing in half. You can see it's not quite symmetrical. I mean, I kind of took the center line of the top and bottom, folded it, and so I don't know why I have extra space here, but I'm going to go with the excess because I can always cut it if I need to. It's harder to add material, but I'm going to take a piece of chalk just to kind of give me my outline for this thing. If I can get it out. And this just let me know where I need to cut. And so something that's why I have the material fold in half that way. I just have to, you know, I cut half as many lines. There is my outline. So then I'll have to do the same thing. You know, the back is the only part that is mirrored. The other two pieces, I'll have to cut one big thing. That just makes it a little easier. Just a few, few lines to cut when you fold it in half, if you can fold it in half. Got my cutting board. I was going to have my cutting board when I'm cutting because, you know, you don't want to cut through to your table. If you were cutting material, this is a necessity. I think this is just a roller cutter. I don't know. But it's just, it's a, basically a blade on a wheel. And that way, when you pick up the cloth, like you're using, so as you pick it up, you know, you just, things get off. It just, this is so much easier as you're about to see. Look at that. There we have it.
So I'm liking where the tabard is. I mean, just it, it looks good. It looks right once it's yellow. I think we're going to be in very good shape. I still have a lot of detail and trim to go, but I like where I'm at. Once it's yellow, it's going to be looking even better. Now, the thing with this tabard is there's no going back. The shoulder pauldrons, those are a little messed up. I recut those to fit this. I can take away. I cannot add. So it is where it is. I mean, I think the neck area, I may need to trim that out a little bit just so it curves more to my neck because everything is pretty square and straight. The shoulder pauldrons, I really like how they look really good. And once I get all this leather and stuff, I don't know at what point I'll do that. And, you know, that may be something I do where it's attached with Velcro so I can kind of attach it, mock everything up, then take it all off so I can paint it because this will need to be silver, look a little more metallic. So right now it's foam and I need it looking metal. I really like this belt buckle thing. Now, it is not attached yet. I need to figure out the curves and everything, but when you just look at that, that thing looks good. It looks really cool. It's some very nice detail. Once I, you know, get everything painted and weathered up, get a little dirty looking, I can look even better. I mean, let's see if I can get back far enough, but that's just, that looks cool. I mean, I like the width I made it. It's kind of a little bit wider than the tabard. It'll tie in well with the belt. The only thing now is to see if I can strip, die strip this. I'm really hoping I can, because I really like this tabard. I mean, just, you know, everything about it, it just, it came out well, you know, I made it a little bit longer, so I have a little bit of excess here. It just, uh, it's perfect. So just so you can see how I'm holding it together temporarily, I just have a couple clips that I'm just using just to, just because I want to try it on, see how it fit on me. So I just have those clips. I always got a couple of them somewhere. Uh, I mean, eventually I will just, I'll sew this seam and it'll be done that way, but I'm not sewing it yet. First I gotta dye it. I was thinking about these towels, you know, the, the red and black. I think leather is my choice. I'd love to use this just because I'm not don't think I'm gonna use like a bluish gray anytime soon. And so what I'd prefer to do is cut it cut it square, cut the detail out of it, and then just dye it separately, then just put a backer on it and just glue both pieces to the back. That way I'm conserving material. The backer, you know, it could be foam, it could be any kind of cloth, anything I've left over. Uh, that way I can serve materials because you know if I Cut this square, then cut the pattern and put it on top of it. I mean, I'm doubling up the material usage. I'm always trying to be efficient in material usage. Uh, but, I mean, this would be perfect because I've got a bunch of this blue. I would just transfer the pattern, just cut it, and then just glue it all back together once I dye these pieces of red and black. And I hope the leather will dye well. I'm, I will be finding that out soon as well. So this is a utility sink. I'm going to dye this thing in. If you're thinking, hey, it looks kind of dirty, it is. If you're wondering if I've cleaned it, I have. I cleaned it with some dish detergent. I cleaned it with some... Spray cleaner, then went with this detergent over again to see how the spray cleaner off. This is as clean as it gets. This is my wool I'm dyeing. This is a little before. I'll show it to you after I get it wet, just so you can see what it looks like wet. Because once I put out the dye strip, it will be wet, and that may change the color. I don't know. I'm not thinking this is going to get all the way to white. I'm hoping it goes light gray. You know, we're kind of a medium to dark gray. If I can get to light gray, I can work with that. So we'll see how it goes. We're going to get started in this very, very soon. So this is where we are. The fabric does not look lighter. I, mean, I was hoping for a drastic change. I don't notice any change. It says to, you know, hot water, stir it for 20 minutes, I'm going to stir it for 20 minutes. You can see the water looks sufficiently nasty. I don't think that's from the sink. I've tried to, like, look at the side of the sink. I don't think it's clean the sink. I think that nastiness is from the fabric. I don't know if when I rinse this fabric out after all this, is the color going to fade out a little bit? I'm hoping so. I'm not... I, I don't know. I hope so. I just don't know. I was hoping to see a change, and I do not see a change. It still looks the same as when I put it in, just the water's nastier. But maybe when I rinse it, maybe that's the trick. We shall soon see. I'm just about up with my 20 minutes of stirring. I have been heating water. I've uh, you know, got a pitcher of water I've been heating every so often in a microwave just to keep the water temperature high. They say, you know, they want it around like just under 200 degrees. My water heater does not do that hot, uh, which you wouldn't want it to because it would scald you. So I've been heating water in the microwave, pouring it in you know, every five minutes or so just to keep the water temperature up because the hotter is supposed to work better. I don't know, man. I am, I'm concerned because I really like the wool fabric for the tabard. Do I just, after I rinse this, I mean, if I don't see a change when I rinse it, do I just go with the yellow and hope it makes it somewhat yellow? I don't know. I mean, because to go from this color fabric to yellow, and that's not going to be a very bright yellow. So can you tell which one I stripped and which one is the regular? So this is one, this is the original. It's not been stripped what's behind it that has been dye stripped i mean i don't know you know this this may look a little yellower which would explain like the yellowish brownish stuff in the thing this looks maybe a little whiter but i i don't i can't dye that yellow that's not going to be anywhere near the right yellow i got to figure something else out because i just i can't proceed with this i mean look at that it just it doesn't look doesn't look like anything so i think my first step is going to search you know for just yellow wool blanket see what comes up 
Um, you know, if I have to, maybe I go to a fabric store, but this wool blanket was huge. It's given me a lot of material. Unfortunately for this project, it's of no use. I mean, testing it would have saved me 30 to 40 minutes of time trying to strip this, but man, I'm surprised it did nothing. Maybe I just don't know enough. Maybe I should have tested it. So uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to figure something out. Figure something else out because this is not, even though I love it, I love the feel of it, it's gotta be yellow. I have some off-white muslin. I can always dye that yellow if I have to. I've got some options. Luckily, I'm early in the process and I've got a long time until Halloween, so I've got time to figure this out. Something I'm gonna do some research on is the knot, you know, along the shoulder pauldron, there's this braided cord, which I've figured out the braid. I've taken this twisted rope, I've braided That braid like matches up perfectly. Then at the end of the pauldron, and I've exaggerated this, there's two loops. I mean, it looks like there's, I guess maybe a main string, two loops. And I don't think they knot at the end of it because that just seems a lot massive compared to the reference picture. And either way, I'm left with three pieces of cord at the end, but on the reference picture, there's only two tassels. So I don't know if this knots and the, the end of it is just hidden in that knot. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this follows some kind of, you know, like there's a ninja, standard ninja way to tie these knots or something. I don't know if these braided cords represent something. I mean, I feel like I've seen something like this similar on like military uniforms. So I may research that and see if I can get some insight. Because I, at first I thought maybe the loops were two cords like braided together, but that just looks awfully thick compared to the reference picture. And again, it's not like the reference picture is really detailed on this whole cord thing. It's just, it's, you know, secondary. So I don't know. I mean, I'm going to try to, I'm going to research military uniform and see if that gives me any insight. Worst comes to worst, I'll just, I'll do the loops as these strings. I mean, obviously they'll be a lot shorter. I mean, I think they're about like, like that big. Uh, maybe just knot it, do the tassels, you know, just glue this, hide it in that knot somewhere. At the end of it, so I'll have the two tassels. I think if you unravel this, it's pretty much a tassel. Though I think, tassels, I think usually though, they would fold up, knot it, so you have a nice tight knot. And then this would be all the tassel instead of just one end of the cord because the tassel is just a little bit thicker. I think that's how it's done. That's something I gotta figure out. Also, I thought about for my G, I was you know trying on this shirt as a reference just to see how it fit me. I thought, oh, maybe I can just use this shirt and dye it. Well, it's polyester. Polyester doesn't dye, so I think I'm stuck with a uh, scratch on it no matter what. So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna have to think on those things and figure it out. I do need to work some more on my pauldrons because I need to rebend this edge because I had to cut it and redo everything. Uh, I am going to be dyeing my belt stuff soon. I mean, I'm hoping this will dye black and red. I feel somewhat confident about it, even though my dye job today went poorly. 